Hello, my name is Gideon Thurber and in this video clip I'm going to talk about data sources in Morpho. Morpho supports various types of data sources or external files that can be used as data sources. And the first thing we want to do is to define a new data source and we'll click the data source wizard, which is a very handy tool. And we'll click the add button to define a new data source and we'll give it a name. And I would like to use a text sample because I'm going to use a text file. In the source type we can define the type of file that we want to use. In this case, again, as I said, I'm going to use a text file. The next thing to do is to define the file itself where we want to take the information from. And for that I have here, I prepared in advance, names.txt. Open and that's it, we have all the information. Now, as you can see, the creation method is really, really simple. No need for scripting, no need for complex actions. All the information in the file available immediately. Another thing we have to define now is the auto-update method that we want to use. So either manual update, which means whenever we want, we can click the button saying update data source or we can define on show page which means whenever the page is being triggered to air the morpho will check the connection with the data source and update the content or periodic update and then we can define the refresh rate of the data from one second and upwards now sometimes when working with uh, for example complex data sources such as SQL uh, then the query itself might take some time and furthermore if the file itself is located on a distant server for instance over the net then again the query and sending the request the query and then sending back the results can take some time so it depends where the data source is located according to that you can define the auto update rate once the data source is defined that's it done I would like to create some more sample files now sample data sources now and later on we are going to use all those file, all those sor sources in different ways in the Morpho. So the next data source I want to create is Excel sample. So again, just give it a reasonable name, define the type of file that you want to use, and find the actual file that y you need. In this case I would like to just use sample numbers, and once we open the file, here is the information that's it. Again, um, we can define the refresh rate, so in this case I want to use it as manual. We can select which worksheet from the Excel file we want to use. So if we had information in sheet 2, we, can, we could have seen it now. And we can actually define in advance the range of cell that we want to use. So, for example, instead of just defining it as automatic, I want to say that I don't want to use all 7 rows. I just want to use four of them. And you can see that the Morpho is filtering the information according to the range of cells we defined. Let's add one more option and I want to call it ODBC sample. And for ODBC, actually ODBC needs to be defined on the Windows system itself but for this case I'm using a sample file and you can see that we have the list again the preview of the data and this is a very powerful tool by the Morpho because it actually gives us the ability to control the content of the uh, ODBC table and this is actually taken from access and defined as ODBC so for example if I don't want to use the ID I can say uh, I can remove it from the content I can define query condition for instance I want to define the number in field 2 only greater than 10 and then it, the Morpho again is filtering the list or if I'll change it to greater than 15 again I have a different result and I can also define the query order saying for instance I want numbers in field 1 to be in descending order, so B3 would be first, B2 would be second. So you have a very easy way to control the content and in any case if you want you can always see the actual query, the textual query, so if you want you can modify it on the um, textual level or you can use the wizard in a very very simple way. Once we finished it, 
done. We can again define the auto update method and the data source is ready. The next data source that I want to create is an RSS data source. Again, really, really simple. Just let's call, give it a name. RSS sample. And define the type, RSS. And in this case, I'm not browsing for a file. I have to define the, the link to the data source. And in here, I have the BBC website with all its uh, RSS options. I would like to use the top stories, so we can just go into the RSS link. We can just copy the link from here and go to the data source wizard again and just paste it. And as you can see we have the entire information from the top stories RSS from the BBC website. So everything, all the information, title, description, everything is here. Again, auto update. Since we are taking this information from the internet it would be nice to keep it up to date at all times. So let's say, ref let's set a refresh rate of 5 seconds. Really, really simple way. The last data source type that I would like to define is an XML example. So again, XML sample, and we'll set the type, and we'll choose the file. And in here I have all sorts of feeds that I've downloaded actually in XML format from the internet. So for example, I would like to use uh, Reuters World News we can just open it and we can see the entire content of the data source. Now, as you can see, we have here all the different columns, all the information and all the links, everything that was, that was defined in the XML file itself. Alright, that's it. So, that was the first step. We created all sorts of data sources in different formats. We can always open the list and see the different uh, sources that we've created, the text, Excel, ODBC, RSS and XML samples. The next step would be to start and actually use those data sources. So I'll start from the most basic way and that would be just by using a crawl. So I can just drag a crawl into the page and on the crawl tab in the feature editor we can define the connection method or where the crawl should take the information from. So if I would define none it means I can just type manually the information inside the crawl. However, if I set it to data source, we can choose which data source we want to use and in this case I would like to use the RSS sample. And that's it. Really, really, really simple. So straight from the BBC website, website all the information goes as a crawl, run, and the information just runs. That's it. Really, really simple. Alright, second connection that I would like to demonstrate is to charts. So if I take a bar chart for instance, I can just again drag it into the page, scale it up a bit just f so it would be easier to see, place it wherever we want on the page, and again in the source category I can define now which data source I want to use. So I, in this case I would like to use the Excel sample which was holding numbers, and as you can see here are the four rows we defined in the data source. The third type of object I would like to use is a custom crawl, which is another way to display information in the Morpho. And actually for the custom crawl, the custom crawl arrives with its own data source de defined by default uh, in with the installation of the, of the software. And the concept here is a little bit different. The custom crawls actually allows me to display also images as part of the data source. So as you can see it takes the data source from here. We have the list of cities, the weather icon and the temperature and this is the way it is being displayed. If I click the try button we can see that it runs. So we have the BBC already running, we have the chart from the with the Excel numbers and we have the custom crawl. However the custom crawl right now is a little bit well, not really comfortable because it's running on top of the graphics. I want to change it in a little bit different way. So what I'm going to do, and this is a very nice feature that we have, we can define that the crawl won't behave as a crawl, the custom crawl. It will stay in place and re replace the content, for instance, just by fading one after the other. And let's define a little bigger gap between the in and the out of the items and we can click the try again. So now we have the fade in and this is the first item from the data source, second row from the data source and etc etc. So 
These are some examples of the use of data sources with items, with primitives from the Morpho in a direct connection. And now I would like to actually create a little bit more complicated connection. Again, relatively complicated because it's still really, really easy. Let's say that I want to take from this XML file or let's say from the text file, I would like to take just one name and just put it on screen. And for that, uh, I don't need to create a direct connection. I need, first of all, to define which cell we want to, to use. For that, we have the variables option. And again, really, really simple. No scripting whatsoever. Very easy way to define and use. So what I need to do, I have to define the new variable that I want to use in, the, in this specific page. The first thing we have to do is to define which data source we want to use as the source of information. And this would be the text sample. Now I can choose which cell I want to display on screen. And let's take just Barack Obama. And now we just need to define a name for the variable. And let's call it name1. The last step that I want I need to do in order to display this name this variable on screen is to take a text object and just throw it in. Now I'm going to type the only syntax that we have inside the Morpho. No need for any scripting. Just define the proper syntax for the variable name. And that would be percentage, which means we are calling the variable. The name of the variable as we, defi as we just defined it. And percentage again. That's it. If we click on the preview variables option we can see that now it takes the information from the data source and puts it on air. Okay, the last thing I would like to do is just to show you the auto-update options of the Morpho. So just to remind you, we defined the text data source to update every 10 seconds. Actually, let's reduce it to 5 so it would be easier to see, it would be a little bit quicker. And let's do that. So, for example, if I'll go and open my file which is stored in G data sources and we have here the names if I'll, ch I'll do a change in the file itself and let's actually put the morpho on air so you can see the change taking place while the production is running so now if I will go back to the data source and just change Barack Obama for instance I just want to change the order of names and I'll save the file. You can see that one, two, three, and already David Cameron appears on air. So really, really easy and simple way to create the update and change the information. Same way, of course, would take place if I'll change the RSS or the Excel or whatever data source we defined. That's it for now. We covered how to create and define data sources. We covered how to use them in a direct connection by using crawls or charts. We showed connection to a text object. We demonstrated a connection to texture, for instance, the eye weather icon. And I hope you found this clip useful. Thank you very much for your time.